Hi everyone, this is Natalie with UCAM. Welcome to part one of a three-part video training series with Dr. Paul Larson, featuring his findings and research on high-intensity interval training. In this first 20-minute segment, Dr. Larson goes over what got him into this field of research 20 years ago and what he's found since then. He will highlight the main principles that govern HIT or high-intensity interval training. He will focus on the context that impacts the desired physiological outcomes of a specific athlete and talk about the content or the actual HIT high-intensity interval training templates to use as a result of all these principles and factors. This is the science and application of high-intensity interval training. We have both a book and a course on this. Uh, you can see at HIT Science. And you can see there we're also NSCA uh, CEU approved and also basis endorsed. That's the British Association of Sport and Exercise Science. And yeah, you can see that I, I teach with most, mainly my colleague here, Dr. Martin Bichette out of France. And yeah, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of history about me first. And we often say from, for myself, I'm a, I'm a bit of a semi-pro. That is, uh, in when I was uh, a young kid in the 90s, I my, my had, had this goal of being uh, a professional athlete, but of course it didn't work out well for me. So what do you do when, when sport doesn't work out for you? You, um, you turn to sports science. And I'm from Vancouver, British Columbia, and I went to the University of British Columbia to try to study the sport sciences. And... Um, yeah, that really led me on my journey. It led me to a uh, to do my doctorate at the University of Queensland down in Brisbane, Australia. Uh, after doing that, I went to Edith Cowan University and worked a lot with the Australian Institute of Sport on, uh, I guess, working with their Olympic program to try to optimize performance. And that uh, that work got me the attention of the New Zealand program, where I worked for eight or eight years, two Olympic cycles. Uh, through a kind of a combined role with AUT University and their High Performance Sport New Zealand. Um, and yeah, I finally returned back uh, to British Columbia where I'm based in Revelstoke, BC. And yeah, so a lot, I guess a good, good solid 20 year journey in terms of understanding the science and application of high intensity interval training from, from doing my PhD in the area to then actually applying it with athletes across many different sports. Now the main sport, I guess, that I probably applied that to is, is the sport of triathlon. But of course, being in the Olympic program, I also have a lot of uh, team sport. Uh, I guess, experience as well in terms of at least being around those different programs and understanding what's important. And that will be the, some of the focus today. Um, I guess there was a, a, a real moment within that journey, and that was at Edith Cowan University in Perth, where Martin and I joined, you know, we, we, we met here. There's Martin uh, and myself, um, along with the support of Professor Ken Nasaka, Mark Quad, who wrote the cycling chapter for us as well there as well some great work back in 2007 to really begin to understand the science of HIT. And I guess some of that work developed into a, uh, a literature review in, this, in the, the world of science. And these publications in the journal Sports Medicine became very popular across both the, the, the researchers as well as practitioners that are actually embedded in sport. And we've, we sort of found that this middle ground between the science and application was important and not really, uh, you know, not really appreciated enough. And that, uh, that turned into the book with Human Kinetics that is now available. And then when Martin and I were kind of going through, you know, writing the book, we said, you know, it's not just good enough to write a book on this. We've really got to teach these principles in an online forum, especially in today's age where that's just so easy. So we also have a, a an online course where we teach the science and application of HIT along with 20 other practitioners that um, that are actually embedded in 20 top top sports that use HIT. So please check wow. that out. Uh, one who thing- Who can um, take that sport? I'm sorry, who can take that course, Paul? Oh, it's available for absolutely anyone, Natalie. Cool. Um, it's certainly it's you know it's it's moving into universities, but it you know and it's kind of pitched around the sort of the the second year sports science uh, level in terms of the um, the content. But you know it's it's available for absolutely anyone. 
you know, including uh, personal trainers that really want to understand and refine these sorts of things. Certainly, you know, coaches and, um, you know, practitioners that are embedded within various different sports that want to optimize their programs. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's on the money for them as well. So, um, yeah, I guess one thing that's, that I really, again, along this application aspect, one of the things that I really kind of have to bring a little bit more background on is, uh, you know, I've spent a lot of time in, in the lab, uh, you know, testing athletes, testing rats, but at the same time, my real passion was, you know, came from my, my life as a semi-pro or, or I'm an athlete, you know, I'm, I, I love triathlon and I love trying to, my real passion is kind of coaching. And so I always came back to that. And along the journey within the New Zealand program, I, I, I picked up the bug for coaching. And I guess we have developed into this, um, uh, you know, a bit of an online business with my buddy Dan Plews, where we made the Plews and Prof coaching sort of business. And yeah, this is one of the athletes that I'm privileged to coach this is Kyle Buckingham. And we can see here in this video, he, you know, he won last year the Ironman South African, um, I guess, Intercontinental Championship. And this is, yeah, this was like a, you know, that good two year journey to be able to realize or I guess, you know, join Kyle along, you know, with the road to, to this sort of finish here, which was a, a magic moment for me as a, as a coach and throughout my, throughout my career, really. And I have to say also that HIT training was one of the key things that we added into Kyle's program that was not present when, when a, you know, I first picked up coaching Kyle. So I really got to experience both the, you know, not, I don't have not just the science background, but I've also seen this from coaching Kyle, just what an impact that HIT training makes. And that's what I really want to, I guess, share with, with, um, with everyone. Yeah, you talk a lot about that in your text where, um, you know, there's context versus content, and we'll talk about that later, but it's not just the science of, of HIT or really any exercise physiology, but the application um, of the athlete in front of you, their unique needs, um, their unique factors that impact their goals and outcomes, um, which brings me to kind of, you know, my next question is for today, with our UCAN audience that we're, um, you know, that we're working with today, there's a lot of personal trainers, a lot of strength and conditioning coaches, a lot of team sports uh, coaches, assistant coaches that use UCAN. And one of the big things we want to do is bring experts in the field like yourself to you to uh, our UCAN users to help educate them even further. Um, what what can people like personal trainers, strength and conditioning coaches, team sports coaches expect to learn from today's presentation? Yeah, so I think what we want to go through in this in today's presentation is a bit of a lay of the land of uh, of the book and and the course, and hopefully at the at the end of the day, the the viewer will be more equipped with uh, you know a real arsenal of knowledge. To, that they can take to, to, you know, into their practice, into their own context, to be able to make an impact with with the athlete that they have in front of them. So I'll walk you through what we have on uh, in our book and course. So basically, you know, it's the science and application. So these are the, these are the ten science chapters. All right. So we, you know, we're going to only be able to brush over some of these, of course, within the the time that we've got here. And if anyone's further interested, they can, of course, get both the book and the course. But yeah, we'll talk about a little bit of history uh, or a little bit of background. We'll probably have to skip the traditional methods. But one of the key things that we'll take here is the um, the approach we take is to really think of the human that we have in front of us first. So what are the key physiological targets? Um, we want to know how we can uh, manipulate these so-called weapons of HIT, fine-tune them. The important one for often for team sport uh, coaches and, and personal trainers as well is that issue of concurrent training. So both your strength and your HIT training, how do you meld those into a program? So we'll definitely talk about those today. You can see that we talk uh, a lot about health as well and the, the, you know, the, the two-edged sword of HIT. Um, you know, and that Dr. Phil Maftone does a fantastic job for us in explaining that. And then, you know, how to monitor both the load and the load response before putting it all together. So that's the book in a nutshell. And then we're so blessed to have 20 world experts that are embedded in top sports around the world come in and, and show us and teach us how they actually apply with, um, within their sporting, sporting context the hit. 
So with that as a bit of a background, we'll, we'll start into, you know, briefly one of the key points in chapter one, what is high intensity interval training? Right. This might actually be an area of uncertainty for some professionals, but what is the actual definition of high intensity interval training? For sure. For sure. So yeah, the, the technical definition, right? Remember, I've, I've got to put my professor hat on here for a moment. It is actually exercise that's consisting of, of bouts of high intensity work that are performed above your threshold. Now that threshold is, you know, it's a perceived effort of hard or greater. Um, technically, uh, you might have heard of the critical speed or power concept or your maximal lactate steady state. Um, or, you know, your anaerobic threshold, it's hit by, de by definition needs to be, um, you know, steady state exercise performed above that intensity, uh, right? It's unsustainable. In other words, you couldn't do it. If you were asked to um, perform it for, you know, 30 minutes to an hour, you'd be right at your, right at your limit. And any, any time, any exercise, you know, beyond that would be, you'd, you'd fatigue. Uh, you have to drop the exercise intensity. And there's basically what, you know, again, through the history and there, there's, and the, you know, I guess the evolution of, of HIT, we, you, you can see the five key weapons that we have there on the right side. So we'll talk more of these later on in the presentation, but, you know, we can divide these into longer intervals, shorter intervals, repeated sprints, repeated short sprints, repeated long sprints. Um, and of course, the team sport practitioners, uh, weapon of choice, the game-based HIT or small-sided games. So that's just hit in a nutshell. Gotcha. Now, importantly, it, it's really important to say that that hit is just one piece of the performance puzzle, as you know, probably everyone listening to this knows. But as I was just talking about with Kyle, we found that it's often an important one. You can make really rapid gains if applied at the right place and at the right, right time. And again, the importance of, I guess, some of this knowledge that hopefully we'll, we'll explain here today. Yeah, this but is I, one of my uh, favorite slides here, and um, I, I pulled this straight from your hitscience.com. You've got a saying on one of your blogs that content is king, but context is God. So if you, <laughs> I mean, it's great, it's, it's fantastic. If you can go through what that means in the context of this slide. For sure. For, so, you know, we often get, uh, you know, in any uh, media stream that we follow today, we see the, the latest and greatest, you know, type of training that's going to benefit us. And, you know, we're all, um, you know, we're all susceptible to, to wanting to just take some sort of recipe necessarily and, and apply it to our athlete. But what the reason why we, we feel that, you know, context is, is God is because, it, you know, it, it's just, it's just so you can only apply certain content at a given time. And we think, you know, we, we show, you know, there's an infinite number of contextual variables that sit in front that, you know, in other words, it depends. But it's, just think of, you know, the ones that we've got here, you've got to know the sport demands. It totally depends on the sport that you're talking about. You've got to know the person that's in front of you. Um, you, you know, again, personal trainers, coaches will know the the huge array of, of individuals that we can have in front of us. So we've got to take that into consideration. And then there's other things like their psychological state, how much they slept. Um, and then, of course, what sort of long-term adaptations are you trying to get at from, from that hit sessions, right? Let's, let's think big picture. What are the various different events of the, of the day that we've got to consider in, in terms of how that hit training might slice in? Do, you know, have you already done a um, you know, strength or a speed session around that? And then where does it sit within the, the periodization uh, picture as well in terms of the daily daily plan, the micro cycle or, you know, weekly cycle or the big cycle, right? The meso cycles and the, and the macro cycles. And only after you have all of those contextual factors clear in your head, can you take the knowledge that you might even gain here today and start to form that content and start to think about you know, what sort of physiological objectives am I after here today? Again, this is what one of the, some of the stuff that we teach, such as the metabolism that's involved, the amount of neuromuscular or musculoskeletal strain that's involved, uh, whether we want to integrate some certain sport-specific skills, uh, whether there's a cognitive load involved, in a, and of course, the volume and the intensity. So let me just give you a couple examples here. All right, let's just take uh, three different types of athletes to show you what it means. So we've got our got my triathlete here on the left. 
we've got a rower in the middle and we've got a football soccer player on the right. Okay, so let's just start with our rower. Pretty easy one, this, because we've all, you know, within the rowing context, we know that power at VO2 max is directly proportional to power across a 2000 meter rowing performance. All right, so if we can enhance power at VO2 max, pretty darn certain we're gonna enhance our, um, our power across the 2000 meter uh, performance and, and you know, re resulting in a faster rowing speed. Let's take my triathlete. This is another cool one. This is actually an Ironman triathlete. Fat oxidation, vitally important for all the um, the UCAN users out there, but also VO2 peak. And this is this is the you know some of the two key things that I was working with Kyle in trying to develop. We you know we switched his diet to optimize his fat oxidation, but but also added the hit training too to uh, because we knew that that was an important piece of the programming puzzle. Okay, so there's two different contexts, but and you know, looking at some different things, they're adding in the HIT training. And we can see and when we're looking at athletes on this end of the spectrum, right? So our, you know, our runners, our triathletes, our cyclists, our cross-country skiers, our rowers, endurance is a big, um, you know, important factor. So we've got to focus on that and apply HIT appropriately and, you know, different levels of speed and strength here for these athletes. Um, and then, of course, we can also say that, you know, they're probably physically, um, you know, the, the physical components are so vital. So we can really place high emphasis on the HIT training and knowing that it's going to be um, of benefit. We can focus less, I guess, on an, of an emphasis on things like tactics and skills. I'll be there. They're still important, but we can make big gains in performance if we're focusing on the physical aspects. Now, there's again what we just what we just showed there with triathlon. I focus on the physical aspects when I'm training Kyle and other um, and other athletes. I focus a little bit less on skills and tactics. If I was going to move into Martin's world, where he is working with um, his football club, Paris Saint Germain, he's got to place appropriate emphasis on the things that matter, such as the skills and the tactics and how you know the various different interactions of the players. Not to say that the physical aspects are not important, they certainly still are, but we, it's important for us as practitioners, coaches, whatever, to, to be well aware of the things that matter because, you know, if we're all here, we're, we're really caring mostly about performance. So um, that context, again, is so important. So again, going to the soccer player, we're, uh, the speed aspect is important and a little bit of endurance when we're looking at that physical. Um, but yeah, we, we've got to really, when we're prioritizing our time across the week, working with our teams, really got to be looking at the skill development and the tactics. Let's just have a look here. Um, you know, you know, have a look and consider how much physical, you know, performance is actually going on relative to tactics and skills. There's just no comparison on something like this. These are how perform, this is how performance is measured in the world of football or soccer. So again, just important to be, you know, critically clear. So fitness, you know, being fitter and faster within the team sport context cannot guarantee success. However, not being fit or fast enough can be a problem, of course. So you know, often in team sports, the, it's the skills, it's the player interactions and the game insights of the decision-making that, um, that, that tend to be number one. However, we need the physical capacities on an individual basis to cope with the demands of the match um, repeatedly, as well as for certain players to execute their tactical roles efficiently, uh, so that and for those physical capacities to fit within the game model of the team. Yeah, this is really interesting um, when you're looking at you know, the long distance triathlete versus the soccer um, or football player, they seem they're two very different sports with different key performance indicators. Um, but both of them, and you make this point in your textbook, both of them face the real question of how do I combat fatigue so that I can continue to perform, whatever that looks like for their sport. Mm -hmm. And how you apply HIT training should be contextual to what that person's intended outcomes and athletic profiles are. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, 
Yeah, you've just, again, the practitioner, the coach um, needs to be well aware of that individual that sits in front of them so that they can apply the hip appropriately or whatever type of training means appropriately to yeah, develop that fatigue resistance. That's what we're all about. Um, right. And I guess that almost bring, you know, brings me to, again, what we're all about here with trying to solve this puzzle of, of hip training. And within our different contexts, we, we can see again the two different contexts here in this busy slide. But this is a this is a weekly microcycle ultimately of a soccer player on the top and a uh, you know a runner, for example, on the bottom, where we're having these different loading uh, parameters that are occurring throughout the week. And notice, just look at all the different sessions that we have there. It's not all hit. You know, we've got speed and strength sessions. And how do you blend in HIT appropriately so that you're not, the HIT training itself is not interfering with the, you know, the training, uh, you know, that's being done or the physiological responses that are occurring during your speed session or your strength session so that there's no interference effect that's happening in these. And we can optimize for our both adaptations that are going to give us the best chance of performing the event on the day or the you know the match on the day definitely so. can you before we move on can you talk briefly define micro macro meso cycle for the listeners for sure so i guess your your macro cycle would be your yearly cycle and this is often if we if we're going to take a helicopter sky view the macro cycle would be the overall yearly plan all right so and often there's this is you know there's a little bit of a preparation phase that blends into you know a building phase that you know blends into a bit of a taper before there's an execution or of a performance and then there's usually recovery after that and that, that's the typical structure but there's many ways that you can kind of go about that the meso cycle would be more of like uh you know a, a six it can, it can be as short as you know possibly two weeks and as long as maybe 10 weeks and it's it's where there's an, usually an emphasis on on some physiological goal the micro cycle is typically a week but it's um you know just due to the convenience of the the work week etc but it can be as short as 10 to to um sorry as short as four to ten days um short as four and long as ten so is, again many ways to skin it with with training but those are the general kind of rules for meso macro and micro 